G'day guys, I'm James McLaughlin from Betfair. I'm here with Mr. Jack Dickens, Dicko. Um, I'd just like to discuss sort of how you got to where you are now, which is the father of Dicko's mailbag and a, a prominent Betfair user and a punting form advocate um, and a very successful online uh, punter. I just wanted to see what got you to where you are now. So how did you start with punting? Uh, punting's, there's no one in my family or my sort of circle that punts properly or punts at all. Uh, I don't know how it got started, but it's a sickness that has been with me for a fair while. And uh, I suppose the the trick or the, the art's been making out or, or training myself to a point where I can make a living out of it. Right. So started recreationally and you just had, it was a bit of a hobby yeah, thing? Yeah, like everyone, I just started as, a, you know, a Saturday sort of punter at a pub. Yeah. A couple of multis, a couple of all-ups. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Betting whilst I was playing footy or something like that. Yeah. Now I don't do anything else but but gamble um and yeah it, it's been a it's been a transition but it, it's been a uh enjoyable one a challenging one but it's certainly something that i've, I've utilized certain tools to take myself from sort of part-time hobbyist to professional and and the, the biggest tool has been punting form it's been crucial to teaching me and, and helping me di with discipline to building my own database from which to sort of make decisions that, that are profitable right so before getting to punting form um like, were you still a hobbyist then and, and you found the tool and that, you know, applied all your research then or? Well, my, my main edge is my, I, I watch horses parade before they race. Mm -hmm. So just even uh, cataloging or storing my thoughts on a horse's parade was, was a work, was a right. lot of work. Okay. So with punting form, I'm able to put that note in for that, for that run. Got ya. So horse was at top, paraded perfectly. Horse was fat and heavy and ran really well, so yeah, closed off really strong, and then maybe next start it might improve. Uh -huh. Things like that. It's punting form does lots of things, but one of the first things I use it for was to store my thoughts on a horse's parade. Right. Yeah, because it catalogs it. So were you just going to the track on Saturdays, just recreationally still, and then just started, you know, watching them parade and taking notes and starting there, and then adding to it? And was this a weekend pursuit that then became something? You well, interestingly more? enough, like the the sectional data and the sort of data side of it is something I use a lot now. But it, I got into the yard because I figured you needed an edge, yeah, which I think you do to survive in in horse racing yeah. and any sort of punting. And I figured I would never get one through data because I didn't understand it because I'm not uh, uh, yeah, number junkie or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't do the best at school, but yeah. um. I now don't have a job and make a lot of money. So like loss, loss turned out all right, yeah. but I need an edge. Yeah. So that's how I started watching horses because I figured there's no computer, no system that can, that can do that. I can do go and learn that myself. Yeah. So I just put myself in there and learn. Yeah, right. So that was your initial edge. You just watch them parade and you're just betting off how they looked in the yard, sweating up. You're probably steering clear of them. If they, if they look fit and rock hard, you're ready to go. Yeah, as a rule. Yeah. I just treat, I treat horses like, like, like a human. Like you can tell when a bloke might have, had a big night the night before, you'd, you wouldn't want to back him in a 100 yeah, yeah. meter race, would you? <laughs> yeah. But you can just sort of read the horse's vibe, its its level of fitness, and you can start to build a profile on each each horse. Great. And then when did you sort of apply, like, this is going to be my full-time income, this is what I'm going to, chips in, this is going to be my occupation? Oh, I kept a really detailed log of my betting. Right. And I felt like it was, just, it was sustainable to really up it and, and go at it full time. Yeah. And I, I wanted to find out if I was good enough or not. And when, when two and a half years I've been wow. full time at it. Yeah. Um, predominantly I bet with Betfair. Mm -hmm. I, I knock off some corpse when I can. It's getting harder and harder yeah. to do. Uh -huh. um, half the art now is in getting on. Yeah. But there's really strong liquidity on Betfair late. And I you can still you can the market still move a lot in the last five minutes for a mm -hmm. race. Yeah. And with tools like Betfair Live you can sort of gauge where the market's headed and what that means. Yeah. I think that's changing again right now with the potentially the POC tax. You guys know more about that than me, but there is definitely a change happening at the top end of the market with mm -hmm. favourites. Right. So like on Saturday at Caulfield, I don't know when this go to air, but there was a lot of favourites that drifted slightly. Still won well. Yeah. Um, I think that's a, I think a lot of that tax has been put on the top end of the market. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're trying to shorten them as much as they can, but they're, they're going to come out anyway. Yeah. But that used to be a bad thing. Now it's just, I think that's just par. Yeah, right. But I'm watching and learning. There's that. always these, you know, trends oh, and yeah. things. And things it's that trends. Are yeah. And you also apply some in-play punting principles as well. So you're backing some pre-play stuff and you're doing some back and late trading. Late yeah. Late trading. So I think, as I said, it's pretty hard to get set. But when you can, you're trying to get as much on as you can. Mm -hmm. And to limit my variance and to protect my bank, 
Um, so I'd be much more aggressive than sort of what they spoke, what they suggested me when, when I was getting started. Yeah. But to limit my, so it's not as aggressive because I'll put, say I've backed a horse at four dollars fifty, um, at a track I'm not at. I'll put in lays, in play lays from maybe two dollars down to a dollar, whatever, dollar eight, yep. nice and low. Yeah. And I'll leave them in for the majority of the race unless I think it's definitely going to win. Oh yeah. As a protection, so if it looms into the race and shows a little bit, I'll have got some of my stake back. Yeah. Got yeah. Um, and any other tools? So we talked about punting form. What else are you using to sort of apply those strategies or any other tools that, that make you the pro that you are? I use an Excel sheet that uh, we've designed, built to log all the uh, mounting yard factors that I mark and, and use uh -huh. to gauge like the strength of each factor and adjust ratings to them going forward. I use Betfair Live um, to watch market fluctuations and I use punting form, especially the worksheets on a race day to map horses, make notes on horses and races. Yeah. And then I'm deeply deep diving into the data when it comes out to cool. find, find progressive horses, a bit like we were talking about with Mark. Yeah. And are you betting off your phone or desktop or? Off a, off a laptop. Right. With third party tools, they're pretty popular these days. Yeah, I'm a bet angel, man. Yeah, right. Very good. And Maybe how because did... I said that on a bet per video, you can start <laughs> to knock off my subscription. But uh, yeah, I, I'm big bet angel. Um, I, I'm not knocking any other third party apps. It was just the, pr the program, the app that was shown to me yep. by a, another guy who bets with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he set up some buttons for me. So it's, it's one click betting. Um, it's a lot simpler. You can set up automations. You can you can really make anything happen with that app. Yeah. You need people smarter than me and not even need it to, <laughs> yeah, to set sure. it up. Yeah. But once they're set up, they're in place yeah. forever. Yeah. And without giving too much away, I've seen sort of since you transitioned to the pool and uh, to the to Bet Angel and also um, your putting form expertise, like your performance is significantly improved. Do you sort of um, give credit to those tools to really improving your performance? Yeah, I think punting form is, is crucial to taking the next step. Yeah. To to putting yourself in a position to to like launch at a race and at a living at making a living out of it. And so um, there'll be a bunch of people who are curious to, to this profession to to start from the bottom where you started. Obviously, um, there's been years of learning. Would you just encourage people to to have the discipline that you now have, and then also just get onto punting form and explore some other tools? Yeah, I think just. Search on the internet and you'll find an Excel sheet or a program where you can log bets and you can log why, like you might have certain types of bets you've had or certain stables you've bet on. Just log all your bets. That's the most important data you'll ever get. And from there, you'll, you'll learn what's working for you, what's not, and you can turn up the ones that are and you can turn down the ones that aren't. Beautiful. Uh, thank you very much, mate. That was very thorough. I think you've uh, given out plenty of gold there and appreciate you coming in today. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> very good.